Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Smite Pro League. It is Saturday in week number five. My name is Tyrus Bart. That is Brandon Nance, aka Juice DM, and we are. How do you uh, know my name? Moments away from bringing you Mortality Esports versus Cloud Nine Hyper X, and well, uh, Mortality's been slipping some here. They uh, sat on top of the rankings for a while, but now uh, third place. And I think I would say more than some. Ooh. They were extremely a, dominant. A bit, perhaps? They, <laughs> they were extremely dominant. A they modicum were of slipping? Almost untouchable for yep. a while. And then suddenly 7-5, and five, losing the LAN event, really starting to lose grip of that team chemistry that we were praising so much yep. in the first two yep. weeks. I'm losing faith in my Sio pick in uh, fantasy, i got to tell you that much. Oh, my fantasy's done. Yeah, uh, you out. Week one, I, I, I went all in on Snipe, and they lost the Thirst, and that was just GG. Ah, uh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, see. Now, we can still a good pickup, it looks like. Oh, we can is so strong, just uh, as a player. Yeah, very good player. But that is North America, and we are, of course, in Europe here, where the bands are starting to come out. Cloud9 HyperX, with their first band, gets rid of Nua. This is a band that we see a lot. And yeah, so band all the time. It's strange. I mean, she doesn't really ever perform all that highly. No, I think it's, um, hmm. I don't know. It doesn't feel like that Aphrodite just like, we just don't want to play against that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not sure really what it is. I, th well, I, I think, think Aphrodite's OP. Like, I think it's the, um, I think it's just because she's relatively, speaking, ungankable yeah. in the mid lane. Um, the If she catches you out on the rotation with good warding, she can guarantee the stun with the clay minions in the jungle. It's so free. Um, and then if it gets too hairy, she can take to the skies. Yeah. And unlike Rom, when she kind of comes down from the snake form, she can aim she it. She can kind of aim it. So, uh, And then she can also have the... A hmm? little bit of jukes. Yeah, a little bit of jukes, a little bit of smoke. A little bit of mirrors, the whole thing. But our, uh, some more bands coming through here. Odin taken out of the pool by Cloud9 HyperX. Mortality with their final ban. Uh, maybe a ROM ban. We haven't seen that Mercury. really much of it at all. No more Mercury. Um, Mercury, yes, is available. Every time we see that character, it is. Did you see that? This is Freya. Um, Mr. Weekend yesterday with the pure destruction going in against uh, Cog Prime. Was, yeah. Was foul. No, actually, I didn't. I was at Six Flags for that game. Oh, how was that? Um, it was actually a lot of fun. Cool. No, I was surprised. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not until uh, your wife gets here. Oh, She's almost. way more fun to hang out with than you. But I bet. Uh, Freya is selected by Cloud9 <laughs> HyperX on size of mortality. They're going to take a look at Jean Quay. And, well, conventional wisdom would say take the Nemesis as well. But yeah. maybe they're going to take Rom off the table knowing that they could be going up against a Freya in the Hunter role. Mm -hmm. But, no, it will be Nemesis locked in. Jean Quay and Nemesis are in the bag for mortality. Cloud9 HyperX, how are they going to respond to this one? I would say put Freya in the jungle. And then take up that Rama. Take the Rom. Very, very Take important. the Rom. Take the Bacchus, perhaps, here, or the Athena, whatever you're liking. I, it probably doesn't matter, right? I, I think at this stage, Bacchus and Athena, the competitive play, seem to be equally valued, um, and that that kind of ban, get, pick ours strategy doesn't seem to be as popular. I would like to see even Sun Wukong does very, very well against characters like yeah, Nemesis. Yeah, you've, you've been kind of harping on the Sun Wukong for some time so now. Strong. Yeah. So strong. So strong. We'll see if, if he does get picked up here. They take a look at Rom after Giannis here does Cloud9. We'll see... Um, what they're going to go with. I wouldn't be surprised to see them take Giannis and Rom, in fact, here. Yeah, that, that would be a strong play. I mean, he's one of the strongest mid lanes. His damage control is outrageous. And then, of course, there's Rama. Uh, and I really like the Rama pick against Jean Quay because I think Jean Quay's biggest thing is that you guys can't fight me as a team because I do damage to everyone. But he can bring himself out of that, reducing okay. the damage that Jean Quay does, dealing damage in return uh, whilst being in the air. And then, of course, using the Somersault when he gets to the ground to keep himself safe. So I think that's really smart. Option over to Mortality, going to be picking up on her quickly. 77% oh. win rate on on her. He's been, I mean, he's been incredible. Yeah. And nothing has changed. No. His meta has not changed. There has not been items that have been added to make him better. He is just better. Athena is the ban for Cloud9 HyperX. Mortality takes Bakasura out of the pool. I like it. Not wanting to deal with that solo lane presence. I'm surprised and they didn't they take it earlier. Go ahead and snap pick up what appears to be their guardian in Bacchus. So, um... They're going to force, well, something quite awkward out of Cloud9 here. What are they going to pick? Is it going to be the Sobek? Will we see Sun Wukong? Uh, I, I like the Sun Wukong. Uh, in this case, though, I mean, it, it's hard to say. For Solo, I want to. I think I want to see the Chalk come out from NQ. He does so well in the melee range. Uh, so much better, in my opinion, than his ranged. But there's Anubis, and that actually is a really good pick against this team. Uh, has really good chase potential against Honor. I see the God of War. What? I see the God of War. You see, oh, Ares getting picked up. Um, th this could be a fight to try to get Honor out of the game early, and there's Chalk as well. Hey, spot him with the Chalk. Okay, that is new. Now, um, Ares solo lane, Chalk support? Unlikely. Uh, I would like that. 
I think Heavy Hammer is overpowered and should be brought into the duo lane at any given point. <laughs> at any given cost, in fact, perhaps. Uh, Mortality with their final pick to go into this Ares. Got to pick something that, uh, well, there's a good one, Raw. So that gives them, you know, this kind yeah. of sustained presence to deal with that Ares damage over time, uh, as well as some some capability to counter-initiate against the pull. If he does get it off, you can throw a Searing Pain out over it and, you know, do some return damage at least. Well, here's another good question is, in that duo lane, look for Bacchus to pick up the Mark of the Vanguard versus Ares. Yeah, I think that's a really, really smart play. A lot of people kind of veering away from it as a whole, but against Ares, a long time. yeah, I mean, Chains and Flames are both dot damage. Mm -hmm. Reducing that damage overall massively would be Mark of the Vanguard on top of giving you some extra stats as yeah, well. Yeah, that extra HP, well, and also when you when you look at Ares, you know, the Searing Flesh, the number three, his Flames do, uh, base damage plus a percentage of your health, but a really right. low percentage. Right. Um, and that can be all 100% mitigated in the first probably two to three levels yeah. with the uh, Mark of the Vanguard, yeah. so... It can be very, very strong item pickup. Of course, it does set you behind in terms of but you can sell your it. Midas Boots timing. Right, but if you go for that kind of hybrid Watcher's Gift start where you pick up that and sell it into the boots, you're probably uh, pulling a Mark of the Vanguard, what? Kramer probably no, but 30 seconds away, minute it, away? It's, it's about a minute, yeah. Yeah, maybe a minute off from picking up the Mark of the Vanguard. So Depending on the last hits. And, and realistically, Bacchus probably can be a little bit behind the Ares here. Because Ares right. isn't going to bring the same utility to the table that Bacchus will, so... Even if his sovereignty timing is roughly, you know, the same, he should be fine as long as he can make it up in a couple kills. Things to watch in the duo lane. Make sure you're keeping an eye on uh, on Frezzy there. Or, or, wait, what does it say? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, keep an eye on Frezzy because what's going to happen here is that Ares, you don't want to just rapid-fire machine gun the chains. You want to try to spread them out to deal as much damage yeah. as possible. You have a two-second window to recast. So what we're going to see here is Bacchus is going to wait uh, a little while before going for the stun, uh, trying to ensure that he can separate the chain cast. Now, if there's the Ares going onto the on her, we're going to see the belly flop at about 1 to 1.3 seconds after the first chain has been cast, ensuring that he's up in the air just about to land as the second chain window is going to end so they're going to want to make sure that they can reduce the damage as much as possible because that's the one thing Ares brings to the table is that dude can swing well yeah when you look at the side of cloud nine i mean the one thing that definitely stands out to me is the team fight potential here uh Giannis and chuck uh the silence and the burst there you have freya for her ultimate bringing a lot of spread damage Ooh, to the table and single actually, target Ares chains and rom speaking of Ares uh and and janice he can use the teleport uh as kind of a, a faux blink Yes. Ensuring that maybe Ares wouldn't have to opt into the blink, which is sometimes a little bit weaker. But we're talking a lot we'll about see. Cloud9. We're going to now talk about both teams as we're going into our first game of the day. Yeah, here is your rosters. And, well, uh, you can see on the side of Mortality that they've had some success, but it's starting to slip and even out closer to where Cloud9 stands, 58% to 55% in those win rates. And, well, Sayo there at the top of the list, 64-40 and 80 uh, has maybe had the most slipping of all. He hasn't really had a successful solo lane outing in some time. His first two weeks were unstoppable, and he's not been as strong, though you can see his goal per minute still massive at 5.09. Uh, remember, guys, Mortality has played one more game to date uh, so far than Cloud9 HyperX. At this point, they are 7-5 and five in their roster. If Cloud9 can win this, they will be 7-5, and five, dropping Mortality down to 7-6 and six and taking over the third seed slot. Oh, my goodness gracious here. Well, uh, any other big standouts here, I think, is Emilito, who has been uh, not having a great go of it here. 7 and 53. That's rough. For KD. That's real Granted, he has 100 assists, uh, so it's coming out in the wash, but he's uh, getting picked more often than not, and perhaps a little bit of insight into why Cloud9 has struggled. Some, giving away some objectives for free, losing their Guardian that much. But let's take a look, actually, at what these gods are playing, in fact, here, as, uh, well... As I call them the gods, they are they are pretty good at the game. I don't know about godlike, but <laughs> uh, again, kind of looking across the teams here on the left side of your screen, Cloud Nine, very team fight oriented with the Chalk and the Ares and the Giannis, uh, Rom with a lot of AOE damage, Freya able to put out some as well. And you look over on the side of Mortality, and well, they have this kind of tricore uh, for their team fight. It's going to be Jean Quay, Ra, and Bacchus, but that's all magical damage, meaning that right. in these team fights, if they itemize pretty heavily into Magical Protection. It's going to be pretty hard for the burst to come out from Mortality they're going to be looking for. It's going to come down a lot to the Nemesis and the On Her. And, well, if they can shut them down, either one of them early on, it should be uh, a pretty good recipe for success for Cloud9. 
to that same regard, though, you do have to consider the fact that with a lot of magical protection, it prevents your ability to push forward. Uh, Phoenixes, Titan, Towers, Fire Giant, Gold Fury, all doing physical damage, mm -hmm. uh, ensuring that you have a much weaker objective fight. Uh, even with the Fire Giant buff, it's very hard to push into Phoenixes uh, with a lot of magical defense. Expect, you know, again, the early sovereignty Urchins. to come out regard. Yeah, but Urchin would be really, really powerful here for Cloud9. Yeah, expect to see an Urchin. Chalk. Yeah, Urchin, Chalk, and maybe Freya's like a fifth item. Really unlikely there, though, but Chalk for sure. Uh, Ares likely to go into that sovereignty, and then maybe a gem of Gaia, Stone of Gaia kind of build. So before we get into this game, uh, remember, like I said, uh, Mortality does have one more game played overall. Cloud9 uh, will get that game back tomorrow. That was the Chunks and Thirst. Uh, <laughs> uh, Cloud9 will face off against Coast tomorrow. If they can win here and win tomorrow, uh, they'll be in major contention for first seed. Yeah, giving them a, a game and a half advantage if they're able to get this win. But we'll see how it goes down, guys. As the teams are leaving their bases, go ahead and introduce your Gladiators for the day. Cloud9 HyperX will be the blue team fighting on the bottom side of the minimap and the left side of the Spectator UI. It's going to be High Rock in the jungle as Freya, NQ in your solo lane as Chuck. Youngbae and Emilito will be the duo lane as Rom and Ares. And finally in the mid lane, it is Optics on what is uh, perhaps ready to be called his signature, Giannis. Uh, over yeah. on the side of Mortality, they're going to be wearing those red trunks out of the top side of the minimap, right side of your spectator UI. It's going to be DJ Frezzy rick -it, rick -it, matching up with Moex in the duo lane as Bacchus and on her. Sia will be your solo lane. Junkwei. Fexes will be in the mid as Ra. And finally, Nemesis on the jungle for Raffer. And I wonder if he's going to go for that fist build again. Bart, what's rule number one? Uh, don't talk about Fight Club? No, no, don't fight the bug. I was close, though. You had oh. the fight in there. What's rule number two? Also, don't talk about nope. the bug. In invade every game. Oh, right. Right side of the map, we're going to see High Rock and NQ uh, gearing up. They have the ward coverage, and they are clear to go here. You can see Raffer kind of still peeking. Looks like they're looking for the blue, perhaps. Uh, they could be going for either one. No, they're going for the yeah, kill. Yeah, they're going in. Yeah. But I think they got spotted by Raffer on that rotation, actually. Yeah, look at Sile. They're not even going to start the camp. NQ and High Rock rotate in, and Optics is going to be here uh, for the pincher. And, and yeah, they're going to go ahead and, and bully away the orange buff here instead of trying to take it away. And uh, that's that's gonna be that. It should be free to Cloud9. What is Mortality gonna do to respond? Looks like Raffer's gonna go straight to the side camps, not wanting to leave that to them. We've I seen love that a idea. Few teams actually oh, fail at this. Optics and now is not in a good spot here. He's actually stuck between two, taking a lot of damage. Nemesis coming to cut the path off. Mm, Optics is in a real bad spot. Yeah. Nice use of the ability there, just to do some damage on the creeps, try to clear out the path a little bit. But First Blood will go to Fexus in an extended auto attack engagement. Yeah, this means that well, High Rock needs to go crazy now because they invested a lot into this start, so we really need to see a lot out of him. And, and well, kind of going back to um, this Raffer build here with the Hog 2, we did see the other day the Fist of the Gods uh, set up on Nemesis. Really, really early pickup, it double works. dashing in, using that stun to set up raw snipes. And while well, we have very similar setup here, and if you look over at the left side lane, you can see just how dangerous Ares is in the first four levels as Moex takes well over half of his look HP. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. Sayo doesn't recognize. Raffer looks like he's going to go back in. They do have Hand of the Gods available again. Um, High Rock, actually, yes, Hand 2 should be good. Raffer taking a lot of damage. Hand's going to finish it up there, giving that one away to NQ. Card coming out, doing the double damage. Oh, banish. that's a good banish. They're going to get the Chain Slow as well. Can Chuck another Axe no, over the top? No, he's going to go for the Rain Dance. There's the Axe coming through, but it's oh, gonna, it is going to get Fex as to rotate over. Uh, following suit is Optics, but I don't think he's going to make it in time to put out much damage. Sayo, if he eats another Axe as well as an Unstable Vortex, could be in some trouble. Where's the Unstable Vortex? Where is it? Optics, please! He used it. He actually threw it in the other direction. Uh, he actually wound up hitting Raffer right through his dash, just barely. Uh, but they're going to get it there. They're actually going to delay his back as well. Uh, this is a really good push for Cloud9 on the right side. This is going to give them the ability to get some creeps uh, just into the tower stolen. And remember, both buffs on top have been taken away, and they still exist on the bottom side for Cloud9. One thing we did not mention, however, is that there is a Mark of the Vanguard in this game. Yes. It's just not on the side of the box. It's Emilito actually picking it up to deal with the burp damage. Which is a little strange. It is a little strange. It's a little uh, strange. Non-conventional, certainly. Not but no, 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 no. Something. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is probably Archer's. Hold that, hold that thought. It's, it's not, it has nothing to do yet. It has nothing to do with the burp, in fact. It, it is, it's totally the fact that uh, Ares needs to, to stay engaged on his target to hit those multiple chains, as you mentioned. It has that, you know, kind of 
optimal cast time being uh, you know second and a half two seconds in between so you're gonna eat a lot of archer damage a lot of in minion aggro so he's got that that mark of the vanguard to really mitigate quite a bit of that in fact uh, talking about five per shot archers have a pretty good rate of fire you're probably mitigating 50 to 100 damage per engage yeah um, as for the chains you're looking at a 1.51 to 1.99 uh, recast time that's where your most damage is going to come out with uh, you Oh, max range not quite finding Moex in the left side. Uh, we're seeing uh, through space and time used just to get optics out of danger. Raffer not going to go for the chase, realizes he's not going to be able to get that one in the mid lane as uh, Hyrock continues to get some experience here. Yeah, uh, Hyrock is getting a lot of farm now. Um, Raffer sitting at four, though, and, and Hyrock only hitting level five now. They're not significantly ahead given those two camp seals. A little disappointing on the side of Cloud9, and well... Uh, for them, the Giannis in the mid lane optics has been really shut down, and I don't know what it is. I mean, what, was there just a that change of mindset? That first, like, that first blood, it was just, it really hurt them. Well, yeah, absolutely, but, it, but more, more uh -oh, to the point of... trouble. Yeah, it looks like in the mid lane we're going to have an Ares ultimate pulling Frezzy back in. Do they have the chains available? And Toxic is going to come that's out. A, that's He's dead. Yep. Dead to rights. The, the percent damage there on top of the chains is going to be a, a free kill for them. And actually, Hyrule getting credit for that. They're pretty happy about that, I'm sure. Uh, the early kill on Evelito not going to be necessary. Although, it would have helped out uh, speeding up that Blindest Boots timing on top of the Watchers you have, but the assist will help him out quite a bit as well. But uh, Giannis, just as a god, has been struggling in the last, I don't know, three days? Yeah, he's not had a good showing. Not had a good showing. People are really just focusing him down. They don't want him getting to endgame, and rightfully. Yeah, 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 that's right. I mean, except for in the, was it the Chunks matchup where they let guy. it go super late game? Uh, Vayning again, yeah. Hyrock uh, is and, and caught. And seem to be all out of it. And, and well, they they have a much stronger kind of duo here, this roaming duo with the solo and jungle, but they're going to get collapse on here. I'm not sure if they realize oh, Frezzy was here. The sniper wow. super affects us as well. Hyrock's going to take this, guys. They will get one return kill, but they may lose two for this. Hyrock trying to make his way out. He's going to go down, but here comes Emilito. NQ in a very compromised position with no mana, not going to be able to make his way back out. Going to try to put some damage in, but they're going to lose two there and not pick up that orange buff. Yeah, it looks like uh, Mortality had enough of the shenanigans and said, let's just rotate the Bacchus over, and it'll be a free kill. That was a really big pickup for there. Uh, taking a look at the board there, NQ does drop again. He's, or rather, uh, for his 0 one, one. Now, he has two wards on him right now. Uh, heavy Hammer, Boots, and then Sprint 2. But then you look across the way at Sayo, who is now 2-0-0, zero, zero, uh, is doing a little bit better, uh, trying to get himself into what could be a Ethereal Staff, or it could be... Um, a Warlock Sash. She's been favoring Ethereal lately. I hope it's the East Staff. E either way, he's about 1,200 gold away. I don't feel like at this stage, given how he's been playing, Sayo needs to be looking for these, like, optimal builds. He needs to be looking for what he's comfortable with and what's safe. And that, to me, is uh, East Staff written all over it. NQ going to take some damage here. Not too much. Uh, looks like he will be able to get away, clearing most of that away. Oh, we have an Ares Ultimate well. left side mid camp. Fex has four speeds. Uh, and they're not going to continue that initiation, but they do force a rank 1 beads out of Fex. He's not going to have that for some time. I don't like that call. I think he should have used his ultimate there for the CC immunity. Yeah. It would have pushed him away as well. And that's a very short cooldown comparatively to the three minutes he's going to have to wait on the cooldown coming up from Purification. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe if he was looking to ult the wave right there and head back, you could have made the case that it was a better decision. But without that ultimate available, he needs to find something with it, I feel like, in the next 30 seconds to make it worthwhile. 30 seconds to a minute, I would say probably. right now, blow the ultimate in the mid lane yeah, and, and then back. fight for the left camp. Well, well, what is he at? Let's see. He's got 962 gold in hand once I finish off his boots. So, yeah, I mean, this this pretty much would do it. Uh, maybe he wants to save that Searing Pain to contest the mid-camps. But he's able to secure this wave in those camps. He will have enough to finish off his uh, likely pen boots here. Let's we'll see. Hyrek has started it up. Here could be the snipe. There it comes. And zap. But not enough to actually secure the kill, but doing some damage to Hyrock and forcing them off. He'll gain... They, they get the one for that. They split it three ways. And it puts him to 1160 gold. So, pen boots online. Yeah, that's true. Uh, red buff on the ground as well, just hiding behind those spikes. Uh, overall, not too great early game uh, coming in. Oh, High Rock in a lot of trouble here, forced into the air. He should be trying to throw There's some gonna be a pillar. Out. Is this slow going to be enough? Desert Fury coming out as well. Oh, Moex, oh, oh, really whiffing that one there. Uncharacteristic hit, for him. Hit one spear. Yeah, it looks like I, he got confused or something, or maybe there was a target switch call for optics, and the team wasn't actually able to follow suit. But unfortunately, for Mortality unable to capitalize on what seemed to be a surefire kill onto the Freya. 
Yeah, very surprising. Uh, looks like he's just going to barely escape with his life. He returns back. Actually, Hyrock did not back off of that, being super greedy, really feeling himself this game. He's 2-1 right now. Uh, no trouble whatsoever. Taking a look at the gold, he had more than enough to go back to buy the boots, but he wants to be greedy. He picks up the small camp, the speed buff, heads back. We're going to see, of course, the shoes of the Magi coming out. Still has about 800 gold in hand after the Ancient Blade pickup. Uh, so he's going to... Oh, I'm sorry, that was before the Ancient Blade. He also picks up the Century Ward, which I like. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're going to gank, pick up a Century Ward, right? I mean, if you're going to try to make your way into the base, uh, you're going to need that to... Uh, at, at this stage of the game, and at this kind of... How well the players have progressed, there's basically always going to be a ward there, especially in the solo lane. That's become more and more popular, this really, really heavy attention to warding. And in fact, we've seen solo laners here and there pick up really early Century Wards early and often. I like to play from High Rock, right? He can, he, it'll, it'll be interesting to see, like, let's try to keep a track of where he places this, because it'll tip his hand to where he's trying to go. Speaking of tipping, uh, NQ taking a lot of damage in the right side. Let's talk about the Gold Fury, Brandon, where they're actually going to force a disengage here as Optics comes rotating through Hyrax here as well. He's looking for the banish, getting sped up by the threshold, but they're actually not going to move forward, but this could be Cloud9's Gold Fury now as they push Mortality off the mark. Fred is hitting under half HP. Fexus does have an ultimate available. In fact, all ultimates available on the side of Mortality, but Gold Fury already low, and wait, no Hog 3? It's reset. Pyrox super low right now into the air with Valkyrie's discretion. Moex to the backline actually chooses to focus on Youngbei, a kill that will go to Frezzy. Uh, Emilito trying to get away here is down to one hit. Graffer will pick that one up for free. That's what Nemesis does right there. And Well, the only, uh, the only good news right now across the board for Cloud9 is that Optics did not die again, and he can start building some damage, but it looks like he wants to uh, get a little chippy here. I like here. this. I like this call. Uh, actually oh, not going to find anything. Optics. He was not as sneaky as he should have been. Yeah, he's going to port back through, but... Now what are they going to do to contest that tower? Chalk will push Jankwe off of the tier 1 on the left side, so they won't lose a tower in addition to the Gold Fury here, but uh, what looked to be pretty free is Not no longer free, but there's still no Hog 3 on this team, so... Uh, Hyrox here now. Oh, that's a 4-man banish. A lot of damage going to come through the portal as well. They will get the Gold Fury. Hyrox needs a bug out of this one. I don't know where Optics went in that fight. He had a great line to do more damage. Could have been much more disruptive if they communicated their banishes a little bit better. That would have reset. Yeah, or even even you know giving up that that tier one if they thought they could make a play on it, but without any hog threes on the table, it's just really really risky. It's surprising to see a gold fury this early without a hand of the gods three investment, a wrath of the gods, I suppose as it's called. A hand three. Yeah. Hand yeah. Three. yeah that's good. <laughs> Left side, uh, looks like Young Bay can be able to push this one up level ten right now, doing a good job. Uh, though Moex is level eleven. That gold fury really helping out there. You can see twenty nine hundred gold in favor of mortality. Yeah, that early Gold Fury is going to be uh, a big issue, I think, for Emilito, honestly, overall. That's going to be the biggest problem, is that, well, they, they banish on Sayo on the right side lane, so let's call this fight here. The Aegis comes out, he's going to use his ultimate as well, and now dealing the damage to them. Stun coming out onto two targets. Raffer's going to make his way in. They're going to try to dive him here. Hyrock throwing out the bombs. He no, he one. misses one. Sayo jukes it out, but the Unstable Vortex is enough to secure that kill, but Hyrock is going to fall now to Raffer's rotation. He can't go in anymore, though. Uh, Optics, even though he's out of mana, they just don't have the HP to initiate into that wave, but that Gold Fury, I mean, with Midas Boots and Watcher's Gift already running on Frezzy, plus the extra gold from the Gold Fury, he's going to be pulling way ahead of Emilito here. 5,200 net worth versus 4,400 net worth, so about an 800 gold advantage individually for Frezzy, meaning that sovereignty timing is going to be... We were kind of talking about, you know, maybe there's a small trade you can make there where you're a little bit late, but 800, 1,000 gold timing on the sovereignty is going to be big. That means you're going to be out basically an entire team fight without right. that item. Well, speaking of trades here in the mid lane, we're actually seeing another push go down. Uh, mid tower getting very, so much very pressure. low. Yeah. Actually, nope, that is not a guardian minion. He's going to fall down. Uh, yeah, but uh, one shot, maybe two shots here. It's, it's real close. 50 HP or so on that tower, so anybody can come. Wouldn't be surprised if the nemesis just dash on in there, give it a couple swipes, and head on out. I like the way that they're playing this right now. Uh, Cloud9 with that huge rotation to the right side, trying to pick off something, and slowing down Sayo's stack building is going to be good as he, as he has opted in to the Warlock Sash. Yeah, well, so Warlock is going to be the case. Uh, granted, there's not a lot of kill potential uh, on the side of Chalk to deal with Sayo, nor is uh, there much that John Quay can do oh, to Oh, Optics, you. huge misses. It's going to take Left a side lane as well. Shot. Emilito in a lot of troubles. Moex is going to finish him off, taking him to the sky now. Is Bay. Bay's going to hit all two of his final shots, but not going to get too much more out of it. Hyrox should be able to chase this one down. Ooh. No, a brilliant beads into Pillar nope. there from Moex, but it's still chased down by the roll from Young Bay. The rotation comes out from Optics, but they don't find much more on the back of it, and they are going to lose the mid-tower for this. Yes, their rotation was big there. Uh, Optics really didn't need to send himself nope. to that side of the map. Trying to find a safe way back. It looks like Fex is going to just... 
uh, try to control him, almost Ooh. actually getting that beam as well. But all the while, uh, trying to waste as much gold and experience. He's going to miss two in experience. It looks like three, four, five in gold total. That was big. Oh, High Rock. High Rock. Forced to take to the sky here. Searing Pain came out as well. And he's just going straight into the tower range, and it looks like it's going to be enough to save his life for now as Raffer's ultimate comes out, not doing enough. Sayo over in the right side lane getting smacked around by NQ a bit. Oh, actually, it might be in a lot of trouble here uh, using that Aegis just to try to get away from there. Moving Aegis doing well on that pendant. Uh, but I'm looking at Hyrock here. That is the third time we have seen him use Valkyrie's discretion defensively and scaredly to the oh, point. Oh, they're going to dive NQ now. Oh, Raffer's here. Does he have the ultimate? No. He used the ultimate onto the Freya, not securing the kill, and that means they can't go in on the NQ. Who's going to pop his sprint? And he's going to do work. Oh, actually, that slice that's slice is slow. Nasty. Huge play. Emilito a little bit too far behind to find the chains. Uh, no pull available as well. Hmm. Hmm. Moex, oh, Moex diving into Youngbei, just barely missing the pillar stun. He'll get the best of him for now. Youngbei trying to answer back using those Astral Arrows, wow, he's but still a missing. Lot. Yeah, Moex doing a nice job juking there. Uh, even with that widened hitbox from yeah. the Astral Arrow, unable to make it happen for himself. Uh, Moex has a really big swing right now as well, uh, healing himself up greatly. Remember that extra penetration will result mm -hmm. in extra healing. As you can see, him get back to full health. Yeah, on her, this is what he does. He bullies the lane around this time uh, and should control it through about the 20-minute mark until Youngbei gets the Executioner and crit online, and then things will start to go the way of Rom in the late game. Again, trying to throw out that pillar stand. Emilito trying to close the distance. We, he actually knows that he's not going to make it. Uh, left side, sentry wards are going to come down here. Still two in the inventory for mortality, and the one that was used, I'm sorry, for Cloud9, the one that was used there for mortality will be traded back probably in just a second. Hyrax just holding on to that. I think I think that was one of those buy the sentry ward, and he's like, I bought sentry wards this game, guys. What the hell? <laughs> buy more wards. Me too. Oh, man. Uh, actually, Pulse doing almost no damage in the mid lane as that raw heal just completely shuts it down. Uh, he's trying to just clear up this wave. He's taking a long time. They're actually missing shots. Not going to get the last hits he's looking for. Realizes that the team's calling for a grouping towards the mid camps and towards the Gold Fury as they spawn. Love of this pickup from Frezzy here to go for that shell three early. This is relatively early. Uh, noticing that he's quite a bit ahead of Emilito without the Watcher's Gift Midas. Right? He's got that about 800, 800 900 gold advantage like we talked about. That's a free shell three and still keeping on pace. Uh, for a sovereignty timing coming out a bit before Emilito. So, all things told, it's a uh, a very nice itemization fight. Frezzy, it's going to give him a lot of tankiness in these fights and help the team out a lot. And Synergize oh, quite well with the jumping heal. Jumping in, but that's going to yeah, be beads from Fexus. Oh, actually, Fexus did not beads. His ult was already on cooldown. He's going to go down. NQ finds a silence onto Frezzy. They realize that they're not going to be able to do enough damage. They're going to uh, try to Gold Fear in the back of this, only taking out the raw. Granted, he does have Book of Toth and Pen Boots. But uh, they still have that Bacchus initiation attempt with Andy of Jean Quay. You have a timer going as he's taking out your tier one right now. Hog three is online for Emilito. Uh, he's got the chainsaw, but he's gonna get bursted down just Bacchus. too easily. Mortality steals it away. Bacchus with the knockups. Now it's NQ in some trouble. If he gets stunned out here, Frezzy finding two. But they're gonna go ahead and bail now as they don't want to get this turned around on them. They've got a lot now. Just need to leave. But porting through is the rest of Cloud Nine. Leaping away as Moex, he is going to use his beads nicely to avoid that banish, and Frezzy's going to be A-OK -okay underneath the Tier 1. I don't think they can dive into this now. In the meantime, Jean Quay is going to pressure the Tier 2 on the right side as a Disengage comes out on the left, and he's going to do a reasonable amount of damage to this tower. He's going to force at least one more wave into it before heading back, and, uh, well, Chalk is going to be a, uh, a sad Rain Man. As he's going to lose a lot of towers, and maybe even the Tier 2 here we'll see. That, uh, that Sash adding 50% more in-hand damage for That's Sayo right. at this point is going to bring this tower down a bit faster than perhaps it would have normally. And, well, it's taken NQ some time to clear. It's damn near done. So uh, any kind of split push should take care of that shortly. There has, I don't think, ever been a point in my smite career where I have said, hey, we should try to Gold Fury five or 4v5 against the Bacchus. Right. I mean, it's just not a good idea, but uh, they went in there. They found it anyway, even without Sayo getting a huge pick right there. Uh, Defrezzy finding, forcing out a few kills, sure, but they wind up majorly in favor uh, as more, uh, on Mortality's side. Uh, Defrezzy really doing a great job with that farm. Over 8,000 right now, slightly actually ahead of Raffer on his own team, but he is everyone right now on Cloud9 on Cloud is behind everyone else on Mortality. A huge That's a misplay swing. by Emilito at the end of the day, right? Because Searing Flesh is number three, does make you immune to knockups. Right. So he has the options and to deal with And he could have canceled it directly into yeah, he the... Yeah, that's right. I mean... He, the gods. Yeah, just I mean, it's just a, a misplay. I mean, it is what it is. He, he must have used it earlier in that fight, didn't have it available to deal with the knockup, and gets knocked up and gets the gold fury stolen from him. You know, Dems the breaks. 
You know, that's kind of also one of the weaknesses of Ares, though, is that he also doesn't have a great counterplay. When Bacchus jumped in, if it wasn't exactly a 25%, he really wouldn't have had a counterplay to be made anyway. Mm -hmm. So either you know, he doesn't have a stun, there was no real control, and Cloud9 kind of like grouped up all together, trying to figure out, you know, do or maybe try to do as much damage as possible. Uh, Freya could have been back a little bit more. They didn't re really need her base damage uh, without the Pulse of Radiate combo, so not really sure where they went for that so deeply. Krez is going to get chained up here three times, plus the Searing Flesh doing some nice damage, and they're going to pile into him, but that shell comes out, and well, that's pretty much that. <laughs> he took about 45% of his health. Going to back off that Hand of the Gods used on the left side, of course, towards those camps. We're going to see Moex go back here, Executioner online. He's going to hit that Executioner a little bit before Young Bay here, who has about 640 gold in hand on top of his uh, Light Blade. So, going to need about another 1,000 gold to get everything sorted out for himself. Uh, so, there is going to be the Boxing Advantage uh, continuing in favor of Onher, perhaps a little bit later than what you would normally see out of him versus a Rom, as Young Bay has fallen a bit behind. 7,800 gold to the 8,600 gold. That's the Gold Fury plus the Tower Gold, really, really rearing its ugly head in that duo lane. I love this from NQ, freezing the lane on the right side. It's not something we see all too often in Smite. Uh, much more attuned to other MOBAs. Uh, but right now he's doing this because he realizes that he can't leave the lane. To that same regard, he also does still have a pretty good boxing match against Zhang Kuei. So he's keeping himself as far back towards his tower as possible so that way he can force a rotate on, uh, onto his own side. He makes sure Zhang Kuei has to put himself in a difficult situation to even farm, which hurts not only because he's losing experience in gold, but he can't farm up that Warlock Sash. Yeah, but Sayo's taken to the back camps and is getting a little crafty here. There's an ultimate coming out on the left side here. High Rock in trouble yet again. This time, doesn't make it to the sky as Frezzy pops that ultimate, blowing him up. And that Nemesis ultimate with the Bacchus burst has been really successful as these two continue to roam together through the jungle. And for the fourth time now, find High Rock this time, however, securing a kill. High Rock. 2-3-3 uh, three, three right now, uh, a far cry different than his 2-1 start. Uh, he's looking into that Demonic Rift, still about a thousand gold away. Hmm. That's, a, that's a long time for the damage to start coming out really in earnest from that Freya. Look at this. NQ this? smacking around uh, Sayo in the left side, or right side lane on the left side here. It's the, well, again, this kind of bully style of invade. They're not really like, you know, jumping in there and taking this thing away. They're just going to sit there and say, what are you going to do about it? And <laughs> hey, uh, Emily Emily's response is, throw chains from a distance and cry a little on the inside. Maybe a lot of a lot of bit on the inside. <laughs> uh, losing another jungle camp. Uh, Emilito just, like you said, getting absolutely bullied by Bacchus, who, don't forget, gains a passive amount of uh, protections as well as damage mitigation when he chugs. Uh, so he's not really afraid of the damage at this point that Ares can put out. Ares has got to find different targets, but he is being CC'd masterfully every time he goes for a combo. Yeah, and with Moex having the beads, you know, he hasn't had a lot of success there either. Like, any kind of blink initiation is going to get blown up by Desert Fury. And uh, and if he tries to, you know, kind of blink into the chains, Ooh. the beads are going to be there. Looks like Gold Raffer Fury coming back, back up shortly. And uh, Mortality wants to take a look at it. But yeah, with Raffer going back, they can't aggress into it just yet. Looks like Cloud9 realizes that the jig is up here. They have their Sentry Ward just off the backside of the Gold Fury. Uh, there's a sentry here just off the left side of the mid lane as well, and that's going to be enough to clean it up as they place one more at the Gold Fury there, and Mortality now controls the vision all around the next objective, and they're going to go ahead and start it up here shortly. There it is, and, and Emilito, well, I'm not sure he's realized that he's gotten completely flanked now by Sayo and Raffer. He's going to be forced out of this fight, and without that kind of gap closer like you see out of Frezzy, uh, actually, they reset the goal. Yeah, Moex now. should not be just standing there. It looks like they're just going to try to go in. High Rock getting blown Zap. up from the background. No trouble whatsoever. Optics forced to escape using his portal. Ultimate still online. Huge shot coming out from Moex to push them even farther away. At this point, NQ has opted to just run away from the goal Fury, citing this is just, it's not going to Maybe we can trade a tower here. It's got to be his thought. And you can see Sayo's going to waddle over there as well. And Well, at, at the end of the day here, this... Uh, this Fist of the Gods nemesis matchup with the Raw is it's, just disgusting. It's working. I mean, it reminds me a lot of... Uh, oh. oh. Nope, they're going to be spotted immediately. Sayo recognized it. He's going right in. The demons have been recalled as he turns his sight to NQ, who's already taken a lot of damage. They have not answered Sayo just yet, barely taking any damage in turn. Fex He's is dead. looking for the shot. Not going to find... Oh, 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 Ouch. oh, oh, oh. Let me fix my face. Yowza. We're going to find it entirely. 
And, uh, well, the Emilito trying to make his way back forward with the chains, but he's put himself in a compromised position. Will the burp stun? Yes, it will stun too now. There comes the... That's, that's beads. Bead through, and yeah, they force some beads. They should be able to push into a tier two here, as it is so low from size earlier push. Behind? High rock, I don't think so, buddy. Uh, this is not a good look. Taking a lot of damage force to the skies. At least shoot the damage out, finally. Only getting three shots there. Could have been more. Aegis Pennant could have been used, but he will get blown up right here. There's no way for him to escape so from that one. Three kills so far taken down. And then there's a lion in the left side lane. And uh, I'm not a lion to you. He's going to take that tower. Uh, 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 uh. Disgusting. Left side tower. That was a 4v5 right there for Mortality. Still dominating the team fight. Another 1,500 gold going straight into the pockets. That was the gold fury. That was the right side tower. That was the left side tower. That was free. 4,500 gold plus the kill is going to put them up almost 13k as their sights turn to the fire giant. Looks like Mortality is uh, getting back into their uh, earlier SPL form here as this is appears to be a very, very solid rotation from them and, and a really great effort as they're going to take a fire giant as well. That last fight, the Gold Fury and Sayo, you know, uh, say what you want about his recent performance, still a very knowledgeable player. Fighting four people by himself. Very, very, you know, in the, the timing and, the, and kind of the map presence and game knowledge all kind of coalescing there into him really pushing Cloud9 off of that fire giant nicely with oh. Quay, executing it very, very properly and kind of building enough time for his team to rotate over there and exploit the fact that Cloud9's clear was quite low. Vexus just went back with 2,800 gold, bought a full Obsidian Shard, level 1 Cloak, and Blink. Mm. Troublesome. Yeah, these, I, you know, more and more we're seeing these, like, skill shot mages picking up Blink if they're ahead. Um, you know, what do you think about this? It, it's, it makes sense, obviously, reposition yourself in the fight and set up your big damage, but... Is it? Is he thinking combat blink here? Is it? Is it purely just utility blink? What's the deal? My issue is that I, I'm not one to try to go all in in situations where I might not have it. I mean, they're they're fourteen thousand gold, or I'm sorry, thirteen thousand gold ahead. That's a big chunk. But one bad misplay could throw it out, and maybe not having ages here. If Vexus gets caught, it could be a lot of trouble. Remember, level one blink has a five second out of combat stipulation. Well, now what about like just like a heavenly agility? Like, what does the Blink really oh, give see, you that I Heavenly love, Agility is not going to? Heavenly Agility, in my opinion, is one of the best items in the game. And it should be on every single team, and we're no, actually not seeing stacks. it. The thing stacks. I guess one thing that's massively overlooked is that these rotations, like, oh, they have a Giannis. Well, we're going to buy four Heavenly Agilities. Oh, and Vexus. Oh, my goodness. High Rock as well, uh, going to find uh, himself on the receiving end of some Book uh, of Toth, sunburn. Obsidian Shard Ra versus and Ares with no magical protection items. And you can see Frezzy clapping it up there as he tanks up the Titan. Mortality feeling themselves. They think they got this one. Intoxicate coming out as well. Damage piling into the Titan. And it looks like in today's first match, ladies and gentlemen, Mortality Esports will be the victor. And to the victor go the spoils. Frezzy's like, rough loss, guys. Have a drink. Yeah. <laughs> hey, throwing out the, the great mash for the boys there. And, well, Mortality looks really nice. Yeah, that, that, that looks very, like week one, week two Mortality. 2-1-5 on Sayo, in, in not in his normal style. Uh, we don't see a lot of Zhang Kui out of him, necessarily. He's, he's, well, he's played a lot of things kind of equally, but he had the most success, I'll say, early on, certainly, with those assassins in the soul lane, and now showing a little bit of that magical bruiser side of himself. Uh, definitely made it happen. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at uh, SK Gaming versus Team Solo Mid. Uh, at this point, TSM uh, is hard-pressed to try to catch up to Exposed Secrets uh, or Mortality. Well, now they're tied point. with Mortality. Right. Well, they're game behind, half a game behind Mortality. Right. So this, but, And don't forget, Exposed Secrets still first seed for the uh, entire time. They're going to be playing off against SK tomorrow. We're not checking in with them today. Uh, but Team Solo Mid has work to do. It seems there's a lot more contention for first seed in Europe. Yeah, we'll see if SK Gaming can can get another win going here. Uh, getting this up to 5 and 7 would be really good for them here. And I think TSM and Mortality both would like to see Exec take a loss. But that's going to start with shutting down Zalia somehow, some way. Someone's got to figure I don't it think out. It's gonna happen. We'll see if SK has the solution in just a few moments, guys. That's going to do it for game number one. We'll be back with game number two. Uh, at the top of the hour for our scheduled start time. Have a wonderful next 15 minutes, and we'll see you then for SK Gaming versus Exposed Secrets for our final game out of Europe today.